Hey everybody and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In this video we're going to continue our application development in Android using Kotlin to programmatically change some of the elements on the screen that you see. So in this case we have hello world and we're just going to simply change the text for that. Now in order to do that we need to get a reference to this object that is on our screen and then use Kotlin to change that programmatically. So let's get started. Switching back to Android Studio, if you remember from our previous videos, our layout file is going to contain the UI elements that are within our application. Now I had this uh, debug window down here for our previous video. I'm going to click on this little button here on the right to dismiss that. And now we can get a full view of our layout. Now with our layout, we're going to cover this more in depth in a future video, but just to kind of gloss over this, we have these kind of springs and what these springs are going to do is kind of show you that this element, if we click on it, this is a text view. This text view is going to be centered vertically as well as horizontally in our view. And so as this expands and other things like that, it'll always stay there and we can manipulate those springs in order to set it in certain places. But again, that'll be for a future video. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I am able to programmatically or in code get the reference to that text element. And so the way that I need to do that is I need a way of identifying this widget for maybe another widget on the screen. And the way that we do that is we set its ID. So if you go up in here in the right hand corner, there's a little field here and I'm going to call this hello world text view. So hello world and then underscore text view for that. Okay, so once I enter that in, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back into my main activity Kotlin file. And you can see we have code from our vi previous videos, but at the bottom here, I'm just going to paste that in. Now, this is not actual code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit command forward slash or control forward slash on Windows. And that's going to simply comment that out. A comment is a nice way of saying this is the ID of the widget we want. And of course, this is not actual code, but this is just a way of commenting your code, so to speak. Or if you don't want code to execute, you could always just comment it out is the, the way that we say that. Or you can comment it back in. Again, command forward slash for that. Okay, so now that we have the ID, our, our layout gets inflated or gets created basically this way. We say set content view and then we use something called the R class and under the R class we have a layout. So if you remember our resource folder, under that we have layout. So you can think about this as R dot layout and then dot whatever ID that we have within our activity main that we've defined. So again we click on that we can see that this text view here has that ID defined up here. Another way of looking at that is if you go down here for the tabs that says define or design and text, if we click on that, we can see the XML representation of our layout and here's our text view. You can see all the attributes associated with it. Here is the text that gets defined on it initially. So we can change that if we put an extra exclamation point, you can see how that changes down there. But more importantly, we have the ID here. So we have an at sign here and then plus and then ID. What this is going to do is this is going to explicitly add the ID hello world underscore text view to our list of IDs that we can then associate in our code. So again, we'll go over this in a little bit more detail, but just this, just remember this is the syntax in order to add an ID to our text view. Now I do prefer this view sometimes, but the design view is a lot easier to add that ID. You just add the ID up here in the top right and Android Studio will handle the syntax for you. So you don't really need to know that. I just wanted to point it out because it'll come up later. All right, so switching over to our Kotlin file, what we need to do is we need to define a variable or a value in order to store the instance or get a reference to that text view. So I'm just gonna call this hello world text view. I like to define my types at the end here to know that this is of type text view. And of course, I'm going to be explicit about the type here. And this is going to be a text view. Actually, I wanted to show you one more thing. If I hit control space, it'll bring up the autocomplete here. And you can see that text view is part of the android.widget package. So by including that here, by typing this in, what it's doing, if we scroll up to the top, Android Studio has automatically imported that package for me. Now that I have a value to store my reference to, I have to go out and find that reference. And I can do that. I can find the reference 
via the ID that we associated with it. So this is pretty simple. I can do find view by ID. All widgets inherit from the view class. So a button, a text view, or a checkbox, or a switch, or any, any widget that you have in your UI is of type view. So I'm finding a view. In this case, it's going to be a text view. And I'm going to do this by ID. Now, if you remember up here, we can refer to objects within our R class or our resource folder, namely our layout, by the R class. So I'm going to start this off by doing r.id, and this is going to have a list of all of our IDs within that. So I've hit dot again. It'll give me all the IDs that I have associated with it. Now there's a whole ton in here that we didn't explicitly define. This just comes with the Android um, our application that we've been writing here. It's just predefined. And if I start typing in hello, you can see that this is going to come up as our text view. And now this line of code gives us access to our text view that's in our layout. So once I have that, I'm going to copy the variable name here, create a new line, and I can do use dot notation to change this in very many ways, but the way that we want to manipulate it is its text. So if you remember, if we go back to our XML under text, you can see that now we're manipulating this text object. And so instead of hello world, we're going to change it to something else. So if I change it to this string, we can input that string, that new string, into the text here of our hello world text view. Let's give this a run and see what it looks like. So I'm going to stop our debug session because it has a little bit more overhead than I, I need at this point. I'm just going to hit the play button, run it on my Pixel 2 and switch over to my emulator. And you can see immediately after execution, it says, hello, electronic armory. And that's because this code gets executed immediately and changes the text here for our text view. Okay, great. And the next thing I wanna show you is that string interpolation that we have for uh, like this here. We're gonna do that same thing down here. You can do this with any string within Kotlin, which is pretty great. So you can put in the value of another int is and I'm just going to copy this here. And once that's set there, we can rerun the application. It won't ask me what emulator to choose because I didn't hit stop. It's just going to use the next, the same one that I've been using. Switch over to our emulator. You can see it's already executed. And it says, hello, Electronic Armory. The value of another int is 43. So another way of debugging, as we showed you in our last video, is to actually put in these text views as your application is executing and then just changing the value of the text for those to whatever debug statement that you need to show. And so maybe by clicking on a button and doing a calculation that's under the hood and you don't see that, instead of checking the log cat, you can display it within your application as well. And there's many other ways of, of doing this that we'll go through later on in this series. But have fun with it. Add some more UI widgets to see what you can come up with. So in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to more advanced widgets such as buttons and edit text and talk a little bit more about layout so that we can actually create an application that does something useful. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel to see additional videos in Kotlin and other topics such as iOS development, 3D game development, and more. Share these videos on your social media account because that'll really help me out. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.